uh, about Cambridge. Okay, let's let's get things going. Um, okay, so this is me. My name's Ralph. Um, you're probably thinking, oh, he's very British, very British sounding, but his name is not very British. That's true. Um, I, I was born in England, but I was actually, I actually grew up uh, half of my life in Turkey. And um, that's why I have a Turkish name. Some of you may recognize it. Um, but basically, I'm the operations manager for, for Cambridge. So that means I'm responsible for um, the kind of student experience uh, or the organization and preparation that happens prior to everybody arriving. Uh, and spending uh, a course or two with us in the Cambridge colleges. Um, as, as my bio kind of says, I've tried to give a background of what, where I come from in terms of how my career has worked into how I got to where I am. But I, I started working in summer camps uh, when I was 18 years old, um, believe it or not, was quite some time ago now. Um, and I started working as a, as, you know, as a, the same way we hire students from the University of Cambridge, the University of Oxford, and other universities around the cities as well, um, in the sense of a course coordinator and student helper, as we had last year. So people who, who work with the students on a daily basis, making sure that they're having as much fun as possible, participating, if they have any problems, they have someone to talk to, and acting as that older sibling kind of role uh, ensuring that the safety and welfare of our students whilst also promoting and encouraging participation and fun and um, and that was that was my job basically throughout my whole university uh, life um, in in my holidays um, and the energy was great I really enjoyed the environment I have lots of energy I'm quite a, a hyperactive person I can't sit still so I'm always moving around and that was great for me and I was studying to become a teacher um, which I then became and taught for for six or seven years. Um, after I became an academic manager, director of studies here in Cambridge, I ran a school for three years. Um, I was really focusing on the academia, what happens in the classroom, teacher development, this kind of stuff. And I loved it, but I was missing that high energy uh, experience. But then I started working with the Oxford summer courses over a year now ago. And I was able to kind of put all the bits together, my academic experience, my tutoring and teaching experience, my uh, operational experience all together to become an operations manager to, to create the courses we have here in Cambridge. Um, so now I get to organize all the all the fun things that the students do. And I think that's great. I think it's it's really as I as I put there, it's uh, it's great fun to plan fun. Um, so planning all the fun stuff that we get to do is really really exciting um, and I think we do a really good job here as well um, we had a lot of happy students last year who, who left wishing they could stay more can't wait to come back so and we have a few, some feedback you'll see as well later on in the slides so this is what we're going to go through uh, we're going to talk a little bit about who we are how we started out our kind of story let's say then we're going to look a little bit about a uh, look into the accommodation side of things. So, which colleges we work with? Who are the colleges? You know, what what, what are they famous? Are they famous for anything? How long have they been a part of the university? This kind of stuff. And what does it look like? Um, I've taken a couple of uh, uh, pictures from from their from their websites too uh, of rooms that we've used in the past that we're hoping to reuse again. So, a good a good example um, for people to be able to see and kind of understand. Um, what, what it might look like. Throughout the whole presentation or webinar, I'm going to be talking about why Cambridge is awesome. I've lived here for seven years now uh, and, and it's a great place to live. It's a great place to study. I did my master's here as well. Um, and so that's not the specific part. That's kind of the whole thing. That's going to be the, the let's say the webinar is going to encompass that. Um, we're going to walk through the timetable. I'm going to show you what a typical day, what a typical week, what a typical course would look like. The social and cultural experience are the different things that we get up to when we're not in class. Um, and of course, uh, a little bit of difference between Cambridge and Oxford, maybe a geographical dis difference, maybe a historical difference, uh, maybe a slightly more academic specific difference as well. And then we're going to finish uh, with some Q and A's. So I'm hoping to finish about 10 or 15 minutes early. <clears throat> um, so we have plenty of time to answer questions. So let's dive in. Who 
we are. <clears throat> so the, the founding principles, uh, which basically means what, were the, uh, what was the idea behind the whole concept of getting students to come to the UK and experience a summer course? It was to get remarkable educational experiences, which basically refers to the fact that you get to study in the University of Oxford and Cambridge colleges um, and experience the same thing the students go through, the actual Oxford and uh, Cambridge University students go through, um, taught by experienced tutors, people who have taught at these institutions or similar institutions around the UK, um, and obviously in exceptional locations in the terms that the cities that we work in are very historic. They're very exceptional, they're unique. Um, and it's and, and those pictures there are, are, are quite nice examples of the different kind of things that you might get up to as well. Um, our story. So in this picture here, you can see two, two school friends. On the left, you have Harry. On the right, you have Rob. Um, they graduated from the University of Oxford and they had the idea uh, to, to share their remarkable experience with the world. So when they graduated, they thought, how can we give people an op opportunity to have this experience or to want to have this experience. I think that's something that is quite often forgotten about. People don't know where they want to study yet because they don't know what the experience is going to be like. And this kind of bridges that gap between, OK, what do I expect when I eventually go to university, especially if it's Oxford or Cambridge or, or somewhere similar? What is it going to be like? And this taste, this authentic taste, is, an, is a good example of how to get there. So in 2010, they created the company, uh, an honest and authentic taste of Oxford education, Oxford living and Oxford culture. Now, obviously Oxford, you hear the word Oxford a lot, and I'm talking about Cambridge. You, I, you have to remember that Cambridge came from Oxford, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that later, but the founding members of Cambridge University were from Oxford. And if you want to know the history about that, you can go on Google and read a bit more about it, or there's some videos as well, I'm sure you can find on YouTube. Um, our courses are uh, designed for academically driven <clears throat> students aged from 13 to 24. So we have three different locations in Cambridge, three different colleges, and each college has its own unique age group. Uh, Fitzwilliam College, which I'll show you, is where we have our 13 to 15 year olds. Um, Sydney Sussex is where we have our 16 to 17 year olds and 18 to 24s are studied at Hughes Hall. It's also all part of the 31 colleges that create the University of Cambridge. Um, and basically, this, what, what I really found interesting was talking to a lot of the students last year, I, I noticed that a lot of the time the students had the same phrase, which was, I'm, I'm so happy to be around like-minded people. Other students who are as academically challenged and inclined as I am. Um, I remember when I was in school, I was a good student. I wasn't the best, but I was a good student. But I remember half of the class was not very interested and the other half were, were pushing and wanting, wanting to learn. And that's a, a beauty of, of coming to a, a, a academic focused summer school is that you get to be in classes with people who are in the same situation as you that they, they they're there to study they want to learn um which is obviously very different from uh from your usual schools they back home um our nine to twelve year olds uh give, have the opportunity to study uh, at a british boarding school um and there's more information about that on our website so our boarding schools that we're working with are Harrow School uh, and Winchester uh, College, um, two very, very prestigious uh, locations and schools. Uh, Winchester College is, is, a, is a college that provides, it's the feeder school to Oxford University, the new college in particular, and Harrow School is a prestigious boarding school. It's actually where past prime ministers have studied and Benedict Cumberbatch studied there too when he was there, a child. So it's a pretty, pretty famous school as well. Um, but I'm here to talk to you about Cambridge. <laughs> okay, so if we think about the colleges, let's start with the age groups that we work with. So the Fitzwilliam College is situated um, very near to the city centre. It's not in the centre 
center center the old center it's about a 10 minute walk 15 minute walk up the hill slightly away from the uh, from the city center and it is it's it's one of cambridge's uh, kind of secrets actually most people don't know because it's on on the side of the road it's a square campus um, so it just looks like a building, like any other building when you drive by. People don't know until you go through the gates and you go through the door, which is all security locked uh, with with 24 hour security porters working and only accessible uh, with a, with a special key card. When you go inside, it's like a it's like Narnia. You know, it's like you go through the wardrobe and boom, all of a sudden there's a whole campus in there. There's student accommodation. There's the playing field. They have a fantastic garden. Um, which is where they grow all of their own produce. So in the summer, they have over 60 vegetable gardens growing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and it's it's a Victorian garden set up, uh, but the accommodation is very modern. It's a modern style college because it was one of the later ones added in. So it was, it's not the original Cambridge University, sorry, University of Cambridge uh, first college that was that's Peterhouse College, a very small college. Only thirty students started there. Uh, over nine, about nine, twelve oh nine. So you could imagine eight hundred years ago. Um, a very small college in the city centre, extremely old building. It's nice, but the more modern colleges take tailor a bit better to modern society, and Fitzwilliam is one of those colleges. It's extremely peaceful. Uh, away from the hustle and bustle of the city. That means you don't hear, uh, you know, the road. It's like I said, you kind of go into a different, like Narnia, you kind of go through the wardrobe and there you're in a different world altogether. Um, the lovely bright dining hall, which is perfect for the graduation dinner. And that's very true. It's a, it, there is a unique uh, architectural design to it. Um, and if you you can research that more yourself or you can come on the course and the college staff will tell you um, it has a very unique design and uh, bright massive huge windows for the for the natural light to come in uh, as well and he has some feedback as well that the best thing about Fitzwilliam is the campus it's spacious full of nature and I immediately felt at home and, and I think that's very true that even the staff not just the Oxford summer courses staff but the staff of the college are very friendly um, all the way from, you know, from, the, from the security guards to the cleaners to the people who are doing all the operative operative stuff. Um, everyone is super helpful and super friendly and it has a very nice environment. This is a sample room uh, taken from from their website. So here you can see, oops, sorry, I mean to jump forward. Uh, here you can see a kind of typical student room at uh, Fitzwilliam College. So what's inside? Usually, um, obviously, there's a bed, <laughs> a chair, a desk, a radiator. So typical things that a student would need uh, when they're not sleeping. They need to study. So they, they have a desk to, to do homework on and to prepare projects and other things. Like that. Um, typical things to keep the heat in. There's windows, there's radiators, curtains, a shelf, drawers and a waste bin. Uh, some of the rooms at, uh, at FITS are, are, are unique in the sense they were built slightly later. So some of them may have a sink and as you can see they put variables because there's no guarantee uh with 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 the college which rooms have a sink and don't have a sink it depends on when they put the building up if they put the plumbing in basically um obviously there's toilets and showers on all the floors but some rooms because they have the excess may have a sink may have a shower may have a toilet uh, but that's something that we have no control over uh, it really depends on where the college can uh, isolate our students in terms of Oxford summer courses students going to this corridor, uh, the, the, we put the, the girls on this corridor, the boys on this corridor and, 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 and separate in that sense. Um, but as you can see, it has everything you need um, and lots of natural light as well. The picture is actually taken from where the window is. So just behind the shoulder of the photographer is the window and all that natural light as well, very bright and pretty. if I jump to the timetable. So a typical week, well, this is a typical course, as you can see, there's one week and then a second week. Uh, and the first week 
um, the first day, obviously, is the Sunday arrivals day. So this is where we welcome you to arrive. You 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 get to the college uh, as per all the information and infrastructure and instructions that have been given to you through the student handbook and your online portal. It will tell you where to go, when to go, and how to get there. And we we'll, we will be there at the door to meet you and greet you, and make sure that you get all the things that you need uh, for for your summer studies. This will be followed by a course induction where this, the course director will explain how everything works. What are the rules of the college? Uh, what, what does your key card mean? Which doors you have access to? So you can get from A to B. Maybe that's your, where your classrooms are. Maybe that's where the sports hall is, etc. Uh, and then obviously every day we have dinner together. Sometimes you'll have dinner in the college. Sometimes you'll have dinner in the uh, city center. So there's a variety of different experiences. The reason we do this is to give you the chance to, to the same way a University of Cambridge student would, that the students don't eat in the college every day. You get a bit, you know, it, it can get a bit boring after, imagine you're here for nine months. So there's lots of different places around the city center that we work with um, so that you will have lunches or dinners at some point throughout the course so you get a different taste of different cuisines in the city center. In the first week, all of your lessons will be in the morning. In the second week, they will be in the afternoon. This is so that in the second week, a new student group will arrive and they will have lessons in the morning and that's how we continue the summer. So you'll get to meet other people, uh, not just on your course group or your student group, but also on the other ones as well. Um, there's a mixture of activities that take place uh, throughout the, the weeks. So some of these are local excursions. This means somewhere you can walk, for example, a museum visit, uh, botanical garden visit, things that, that are connected to the University of Cambridge or linked in some way to the city uh, where you'll get to experience um, typical things that Cambridge offers. Um, other things might be um, more kind of active based things. So it could be doing sports in the park, uh, going punting on the river, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a, lot, a, a city tour, a walking tour of the city, for example. Your day trips take place on Wednesdays and Saturdays. As you see, there are three day trips. So Wednesday is a non-study day. Uh, that's a day for, okay, I've had intense classes. I've learned a lot of stuff. Now I get to see a different part of the UK. Um, from Fitzwilliams, our day trips tend to consist of uh, at least one London trip. And um, there's lots to do in London, of course. So we have separated London into several different trips. This could be a river related trip where you'll be on the South Bank and get to experience a more uh, kind of vibrant part of the multicultural vibrant part of the city. It could be a more museum related visit where you would go to either South Kensington, where you could experience the natural history or natural science museum. Uh, it could be a very kind of British cultural focused thing, which is obviously historical, uh, which would be the British Museum. And then connected to these trips as well, of the London trips, there's always a part of kind of an opportunity where you can you can do a little bit of free time roaming as well within a confined area. So you get to go with your friends and experience a little bit of uh, the city as well. Um, so that's a typical day trip from Cambridge to London. Other trips may include things like a seaside visit. If it's a really hot day, for example, you might get to go to a British seaside like Brighton, uh, for example, uh, or it could be a historical city, um, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, at the end when we're comparing Oxford and Cambridge a little bit, uh, such as Norwich, which is one of the most uh, important old um, market towns, trading uh, towns of of for the Vikings and the Romans back in the day. So very, very beautiful places as well. Um, evening activities tend to vary depending on what you've done during the day. So for example, if you've had a very uh, long academic day, like Tuesday, for example, lessons, lessons, lunch, and then a skills masterclass, which I'll talk a little bit about to you in a minute. When you have a bit of free time there, just to kind of go, oh, okay, calm down a bit, have a nice dinner, maybe the dinner's in the city centre, then the evening activity will also be connected to the city centre. So that way you stay out of the college because you've been in the college all day, you get some experience out of the college. So you, when you come back home, 
you're ready to experience the college the next day again. Um, evening activities could include on-site activities, as I mentioned, such as games night, quizzes. In Cambridge, everywhere does quizzes. Quizzes are really popular in Cambridge. Lots and lots of questions, lots of history, lots of everything, really, knowledge, basically. So we, do, we love good quizzes in Cambridge. Um, everyone has a quiz team. It's very, very popular. All the university students have quiz teams. And, uh, and so we try to also host a Cambridge University style quiz as well. Um, if you've had a long day, we might decide to do a film night where we, we, we offer movies and, and we say, okay, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna have a nice relaxing movie night all together. Um, other activities could be going into the town, as I mentioned, and, and completing a, a treasure hunt. Uh, so you get to know the city a little bit as well, but you're also kind of working as a team to, to complete some tasks, which can be very fun as well. Uh, punting we we talked about as well so there's lots of different activities in the evenings that you might get up to the skills masterclass is an academic part of your course um however it's academic with a twist of practice and so it's not just theory it, there's some kind of practice as well these are skills development workshops in a sense where we want to help the 13 to 15 year old age group develop interpersonal skills, critical thinking skills, uh, divergent thinking, analytical thinking, holistic thinking, all these different types of ways of solving a problem and working together as a team. So there'll be things like a, 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 a situation, a problem, and then there's a solution to get there. How are you going to do it? It could be something uh, that you have to physically create. Uh, it could be something you need to design. It could be a, a problem you need to solve. It could be a debate, something you need to discuss. Uh, it could be something you need to present. There's so many different things that you might get up to, but it's all about developing key skills that you're going to need as you get older through your academic studies and then eventually into your professional studies or professional careers as well. Uh, every Friday, we'll have a formal dinner, which is uh, very, very uh, famous in, in Cambridge and Oxford. Formal dinners are where you dress up uh, in your best attire. So you have your suit, uh, this could be a funky suit or a full suit, but basically you're smart uh, and you're, 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 you go to a sit down meal, which basically means you, you sit down for three courses. So you have your starter, your main and your dessert, and you'll spend about two hours having dinner. It's a very kind of long, slow process, um, but it's, it's, it's very famous in Oxford and Cambridge. And the university colleges compete with each other about who has the best food and who has the best kind of crystal glasses and who has the best menus and this kind of stuff. Um, so it's a very, very kind of common thing uh, if you're a student at the university. If you're not a student at the university, there are only certain days you can do this. So tourists can't do this. If you're a tourist and you say, oh, can I have a formal dinner? No, it doesn't exist. If you live here, you can apply, you have, there's like a waiting list you can apply. Uh, if you have a friend who's a student, they can invite you. If you don't have that, then it's pretty much an impossible thing to do. So this is also a very unique part of being a university uh, student. And then after the after formals, we will always have a bop disco or some kind of party uh, where we will basically put some music on and have a great time all together. Maybe learning dances from different countries, uh, singing songs. Last year we did some karaoke, a bunch of different fun activities. Your last Friday will be a graduation. So the party will be a result of the graduation. So this means that you'll have your graduation, you'll eat your formal dinner, and then you'll have a big party to celebrate at the end of your course. And obviously all the great friends that you've made while you've been here. A lot of these things are the same. For example, the formal dinners and the graduation and the parties are the same for the, all of the, our age groups. Doesn't matter if you're nine or 24. That's the authentic experience. That's the special, unique, experience so that's what we do um, obviously there are things that change as the age groups change uh, but there are some things that are very similar so let's move on to our 16 to 17 who stay at Sydney Sussex College Sydney Sussex College is a much much older college in fact it's it's one of the old colleges uh, in Cambridge it's about 400 years old um, as you can see this this college is Again, completely hidden. It's hidden behind an, an old Roman wall in the middle of the city. Um, so you're walking down the street 
On your right, you see, I don't know, a pharmacy, a bank, da, da, da. on the left, you see a wall. You have no idea there's a college there. But again, as soon as you go into that entrance and you open up to a very, very traditional style of British college buildings, which are uh, quads. A quad, which stands for four, is basically four walls and in the middle, a garden, uh, like a square. So every college in Cambridge pretty much has a quad, including uh, Fitzwilliam College as well. It's just a slightly more modern and bigger one. Uh, but it's the same idea. So different quads have different gardens, different gardens have different rules, different rules have different flowers, different flowers have different responsibilities and all that jazz. And it's it's really, really, really pretty, uh, especially when it's sunset, the sun hits it, it has this old kind of brown, I have to say, it's like a, it's like a, a yellowy brown colored brick. So when the sun hits it, it becomes gold. Um, and it's, it's a very, very pretty college, uh, extremely traditional. And it is in the city centre, as in you step out of the college, you're in the city centre. You are one minute away from the centre market square. You are one minute away from everything, basically. You're, you're in the city centre. Um, it's also the supposed burial place uh, for Oliver Cromwell's head. Um, so I'll let you research that if you're interested in in a bit of history as well. It's also where Sherlock Holmes was expected to have studied, or is, is suspected to have studied. Um, and there's a bit more history there as well. Again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Um, you have to come and study here and, and, and find it out for yourself. Um, the facilities are very good and everything is well planned. Samantha had a great time there. And I think it's, it's one of those interesting buildings where uh, the next slide kind of is, is a quote I took from their own website, which is, there is no typical room at Sydney. You might live in a room built in the late 16th century, which is the 1500s, or something that was built in the more present day, maybe 50 years ago, for 60 years ago. It's a very unique college in the sense that it has, it's where history meets present day experience. Uh, this is one of the rooms that we had last year. I believe this is in Garden Court. So as I mentioned, those quads, they're also called courts. So uh, the quad is the grass in the middle, and then the court is the name of the buildings around them. So you have Garden Court, Foster Court, for example. Uh, and that's where we had a lot of our students staying last year. Um, and so here again, a typical bedroom has a, a bed, a chair, somewhere to study radiator for heat if you need to, curtains obviously, uh, drawers, waste bin, all the things that the regular student of Cambridge would need. And again, some of them, if it's a more modern building that has the plumbing systems put in as they were building, some of them may have a sink, not a shower, not a toilet, but a sink. Some of them may have a shower. Some of the en-suites, obviously, if it's an en-suite room that you've booked with us, that will have its own toilet and shower as well. So the rooms are very similar to the other college. It's just the difference is some of them were built 500 years ago, 600 years ago. So, which is obviously incredible. Uh, and again, this, yeah, this is, this is a typical photo you can find if, if you were to Google the college accommodation. How is the timetable different from our 13 to 15s? Well, you can see here, um, instead of, um, Wednesdays being an excursion day and no studies, the 16 to 17 year olds get to study a little bit harder. And it's a little bit more kind of individual focused in terms of project work and presentational development skills and stuff like that. What do I mean? Well, your subject classes are the same, specifically what you're studying. However, on Wednesday, you have a deadline. The deadline is a specific type of work, it could be an essay be a portfolio, could be any kind of assessment that the University of Cambridge and Oxford offer or require students to do. And this would mean that your one-to-one -one tutorial or one-to-pair tutorial, so you're usually with a partner, on Wednesday is to discuss what you've submitted, sorry, on Thursday, to discuss what you've submitted on Wednesday. So Instead of Wednesday being a no study day, it's quite quite the opposite. Tuesday afternoon slash evening is get all your 
homework, re do as much reading and research as possible. Wednesday, produce your work, submit your work, and then Wednesday afternoon and evening, have a lot of fun. Thursday, discuss your work with your tutor, and then seminar preparation for the, fr for the Friday classes, depending on what the topic is and what you're studying. Um, details of which I cannot give because I, I'm not, uh, I don't know, I'm not creating the syllabus. Um, the second week, the opposite switches again. So instead of classes in the morning, the classes in the afternoon. However, you do have a university masterclass. You might remember the word masterclass from the previous slides with the 13 to 15, which is called skills masterclass. The university masterclass is a very similar idea, but instead of looking at overall skills one needs, we're looking at, okay, you're getting to that age where you're gonna to go to university, what specific skills do university students need? What do they need in order to apply for university? In the UK, for example, the application process is already quite complicated. You need to submit a personal statement, a letter, maybe an essay, justifying why that university should accept you. Cambridge and Oxford, do you do, do interviews? You know, you actually have to join an interview, like as if you were getting a job, to go to the university. They don't just accept you. Um, so there's kind of skills that require uh, uh, things that are required by university preparation students. So those are the kind of things that we target in the university masterclass. Cultural activities are very similar to the 13 to 15s. Again, lots of stuff in the city center, lots of stuff, punting, lots of exercise and, and kind of act physical activity things as well, like sports in the park, uh, walking tours, um, day trip is to London. Like, as I mentioned, London is, is, is so big. There are different specific places to go. So the London day trip happens from Cambridge every Saturday and different groups go to different parts of London to get a different experience. Um, dinner wise, there are less college dinners than the 13 to 15. So there are slightly more different restaurants and cuisines you get to experience as you're in the city centre. Um, and the same idea on Friday nights lovely formal dinner followed by a nice party including the graduation on the second friday hughes hall is uh, a more uh, again another modern um i think it was 1885 it joined the university of cambridge yeah 1885 and it was the uh, ah it was a pioneering uh, university for education for women um, so it has a very, very uh, important history there as well. Um, and this, you can kind of see in the, in, the, in the picture there, that blurred building in the background, that's where our students tend to stay um, and overlook um, Fenner's ground, which is the University of Cambridge's cricket, uh, cricket ground. Again, Victorian buildings, uh, so similar time frame to Fitzwilliam. So the buildings, some of the buildings look very similar. An um, extremely multicultural part of town. So Mill Road uh, is a very, very, very important part of Cambridge. It's the most multicultural place in Cambridge that has a lot of independent businesses. So there's no many chains, uh, which is why it's one of my favourite places, because you get local people from this region um, or people. Again, I don't mean ethnically. I mean, they live here um, completely ethnically diverse. So you get tons of cuisines every cuisine you can imagine it's on mill road um which gives obviously a great experience for the 18 to 24 year olds to be able to kind of venture out in their free time just off away from the campus onto this part of, of the city which is towards the south of cambridge uh, not so south though south center of cambridge i should say it's about 10 minute walk from the city center so it's the opposite direction to fitz um to fitzwilliam and yeah, as it says there, short walk from Parker's Peace, which is the home of football. To be specific, it's not where football was created, it's where the rules of football were created. Um, so who decided on what, how the rules were of the game should be? It, um, there's actually a lamppost in the middle of Parker's Peace, which is a big green area uh, where, they, where it was played and decided. Uh, it's an extremely peaceful and relaxing place to stay and study. So. If you're if you're looking for somewhere where you can really get into the research and the theory and the articles and the journal part of, of academia, uh, it's an extremely beautiful place to study. Um, this year, we're going to be using their library as a place for tutorials. 
uh, as well, which is it's a really quiet, tranquil uh, place to place to study for sure. Um, the bedrooms that we have in Hughes Hall, again, another picture, again, very similar to the others, uh, standard kind of University of Cambridge style, uh, a bed, chair, desk, ready to go some shelf drawers, waste bin, exactly the same stuff. And you can see there through the window overlooking the grounds or the cricket grounds. Uh, we don't know which corridor we're going to be staying on just yet. It's still too early for us to know. Uh, the college has to vacate all the students and know which students are going to stay for the summer from their college. Uh, but generally speaking, that ground, that Fenner's building is where our students stay. And again, the ensuite rooms will have sinks, showers and toilets in them as well um, at Hughes. Timetable for, for the 18 to 24s. Oops, Ooh, sorry, jumped ahead to my second screen. Bear with me. There we go. Uh, very similar to the um, 16 to 17 timetable. Um, so again, subject study in the morning, tutorial preparation and deadline on Wednesday. Paired tutorials. Um, remember that in, actually, no, I won't say anything because it's in my slides coming up. Um, here, instead of the university masterclass, we have professional masterclass because a lot of the students who are on this on this course either have already been to university, are currently at university, or are about to go to university and have already gone through the preparation for that. So the next step in their kind of life is professional related uh, skills and uh, and things like that. So this professional masterclass focuses more on skills that one might need in the career and doing their work uh, once they get to a certain stage. Uh, this could be something related to, uh, for example, uh, presenting um, or delivering a webinar, for example, <laughs> could be anything. Um, social activities are slightly more relaxed on the 1824 side of things because the students are over 18. Um, we have obviously a plan in place, but some students may have, you know, not, not other plans. Obviously, we, we still want to know where everyone is and make sure everyone is safe and secure. Um, but as they're over 18, uh, as, as students are over 18, they have the ability to kind of opt out or join a bit later or leave early and it's, it's OK uh, for us. But obviously, we still advise everyone, join the things that we set up, uh, get involved and meet everyone as much as possible. On Friday nights, uh, the college will provide the formal hall, as everyone else does. Um, but then on the first Friday and the second Friday, uh, we'll be going into the city centre to a little cocktail bar uh, where we can have a celebratory cocktail drink uh, or a mocktail drink uh, to celebrate the end of the course. Um, day trips, very similar. Central London again, go to London. Again, a specifically devised plan of where to go, what we're doing. You know, we don't just go to London and do nothing. There's a plan in place, of course. It could involve, as I mentioned, South Bank, museums, um, Camden Town, different parts of London um, where we would like you to, to see and show you around. Um, social activities in the evenings. Uh, again, there, there's always some kind of activity for, 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 for physical activity uh, every week. So there'll be some kind of go ahead and do this. It could be uh, sports related or something. Um, tours, city tours, walking around the city. Um, the 18 to 24s tend to go to more restaurants than, than the other groups again. So uh, several other restaurants that we'll be using as well, uh, especially along that multicultural mill road that I mentioned, the local <laughs> independent businesses as well. Okay. So Cambridge, world-class subject expertise. Cambridge is famous for uh, specific subject areas, that's for sure. Um, just if you think about uh, back to COVID, I know it was the University of Oxford that worked with AstraZeneca to create the AstraZeneca um, vaccination, which is a Cambridge-based company. Their headquarters are in Cambridge. So things like biotech, genetics, technology, innovation, medicine, natural sciences, neuroscience are very, very common subjects uh, at the University of Cambridge. And a lot of these um, companies that the students create are in Cambridge as well. 
such as AstraZeneca. Um, you have um, a science park and business park around Cambridge, in the north of Cambridge. So a lot of innovation, a lot of technology happens here. Uh, David said, an in, it's an institution where many of the greatest minds in history have gathered uh, and the place where all of these people grew, got inspired and developed their theories that have shaped the world into what it currently is. I don't think I can put it better myself, really. Um, so thanks to David <laughs> for saying that. Um, when I found out I could study it here at Cambridge, I just knew I had to try. So Ksenia came to, to Cambridge to study neurology specifically. Um, and a lot of these, uh, this is, by the way, there's these subjects are not just age specific. They're, you know, doesn't matter which age you, age you are. We offer all these subjects to all age groups. Um, I've, I've never enjoyed a, a class more than I have in Cambridge. And I think that comes down to, again, being surrounded by like-minded people, which is great. Places of, uh, and culture to explore. It's a very old city, lots of history. I'll talk a little bit about its location in a minute so you can kind of think about how what it's near to. Um, it has an old part, it has a multicultural part, it has a more modern part, it has beautiful river, and believe it or not, it is the driest city or county in England. Uh, Cambridge is so flat, it actually goes a bit like Holland, it goes slightly below sea level. So the wet weather passes over Cambridge pretty quickly. It doesn't stay and rain all day. It usually goes rain and then disappears. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I love to live here because I like to cycle. I cycle everywhere. Um, and Cambridge is an extremely environmentally friendly city. Uh, very green, great recycling uh, as someone who lives here. Um, and yeah, the weather, the weather permits that as well, which is awesome. I'll let you read some of the things there as well. That, Cambridge is a city full of life history and more cyclists than you could ever imagine. Absolutely true. Everything you need nearby, it's a small city. It's, it's different to Oxford in that sense. And the next slide explains that as well. In Cambridge, no matter where you are, everything is 20 minutes away. I think someone's even put that, it isn't very big, so you can find everything uh, without walking more than 20 minutes. It's very true, everything's around you. You want to go to the shops? They're there. You want to go to restaurants? They're there. You don't need to travel a, a, a lot, a long time to get from A to B. A lots of independent small cafes as well. Lots of lovely places. Um, yeah, so social culture experiences there. You can kind of see uh, the different parts. So punting on the bottom left there. Students in class experimenting with different chemicals there on the bottom right. Studying. I think that's a sundial potentially on the top right there. And then students hanging out in class, uh, in, in bedroom, in their bedroom, uh, creating their tutorial preparation for their classes the next day. Yeah. Uh, and here we have a few other day trips, as I mentioned. So you've got the city centre, River Cam, London Eye, Kensington Museums, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very pretty places and very historic, important places to visit. Excellent. Um, so a little bit difference between, I realise that we've only got about eight minutes left and you might have some questions, so I'm going to try and uh, rush through this last bit, but both very similar parts of the uh, uh, a distance from London. Um, Cambridge is by the Fens, which is kind of a, a land that's a little bit waterlogged, um, and Cotswolds in Oxford, which is a, a land that's a bit more kind of uh, hilly. So it's like Cambridge goes down, and Oxford goes up in terms of landscape. Um, similar population, but Oxford is bigger. It's also an older city, which makes sense. Um, one river through Cambridge, two rivers through Oxford. Punting on the River Cam, which is a guided tour, whereas punting in Oxford is not guided, it's do it yourself, which can also be fun, but the tour part of it makes it a bit more luxurious here in Cambridge. Uh, Radcliffe Cam Camera, which is a, a very important building, historic building in, um, you see it on a lot of pictures basically when you Google Oxford, uh, whereas Cambridge, you get the other one, the King's Chapel, which is obviously part of King's College, famous for its boys choir, uh, which is one of the best in Europe. And also the fact that it took 101 years to build in its famous Gothic, uh, iconic um, Gothic uh, architecture as well. Uh, Fitzwilliam Museum is very similar to the Ashimolean Museum, which obviously is very similar to the British Museum. So um, it kind of has a lot of history uh, and all the things that happened 
that were stored and taken from different parts around the world and stored in the museum here in the UK. As I mentioned, Oxford students founded Cambridge, and you can see there 1096 and 1209, so the different uh, come, uh, different years that the universities were founded, um, and 31 colleges here in, in Cambridge. Um, so we obviously use three of them and live in three of them, but there are opportunities to go and see the other ones as well. Uh, and then 39 colleges in Oxford. However, Nobel Prize winners, uh, there's 121 Nobel Prize winners in, uh, in, in Cambridge. So when I say in Cambridge, Cambridge University graduates who have won Nobel Prizes uh, is 121 of those, whereas in Oxford, there's only 72. I say only, it's still a lot, it's still a, an achievement, um, but it's, it's less than Cambridge. <laughs> Um, tutorials versus supervisions, they're exactly the same thing, they're just called different words.